Hi and welcome to another of the DTA screencasts and we're talking about the respiratory system. Uh, in this section we're going to be looking at the gas exchange, internal and external respiration. So what you need to know by the end of the session is how O2 and CO2 transfer from the air that we breathe in into the working muscles. So in essence you should by the end be able to talk your way through what's happening in relation to the O2 and CO2 that you see there through each one of these different sections. It might look a little bit complicated for now, but hopefully by the end you'll be able to understand it. So that's the aim of the session. So let's get started. So just a couple of things um, that we need to clarify before. So pulmonary ventilation. This is the process by which oxygen and carbon dioxide enter and exit the alveoli. Respiration though is the process by which the O2 and CO2 diffuse in and out of the blood. This is also known as a gas exchange. There is also external respiration. So this is one of the sites where this diffusion takes place and the other one is internal respiration. So firstly, external respiration. This occurs at the respiratory membrane in the lungs at the site of the alveoli. Now most of you probably covered this in some sort of biology or in GCSE PE. But in essence what we're on about is this transfer of these CO2 gases from the capillaries out into the alveoli and the O2 gases in the alveoli into the capillaries and this is known as external respiration. Strange that you call it external but the reason is we have a, a more in-depth one, one that's further inside the body for want of better expression and that is internal respiration. So this one here takes place as it says there at the respiratory membrane in the tissue. So this could be any tissue, it could be for your kidneys, for your uh, gastrocnemius, thigh muscle, it could be absolutely anywhere. Anywhere where oxygen is needed within the body. So for the from the capillaries to the working muscles we get a diffusion of CO2 from the capillaries to the yeah from the capillaries to the working muscles so we get O2 diffusing across into the working muscles and at the same time we get this diffusion of CO2 into the capillaries. So that's the site of internal respiration. So I've mentioned this word a couple of times, uh, diffusion, and you may have heard of it before. Principally what we're talking about is the concept of gases and how they move from one place to another. So within the air that we breathe, there is obviously different gases, uh, one of them being O2 and the other being CO2. So we measure these in terms of pressure, how much pressure they're exerting on other gases within uh, that particular area. So for example, in, in this section here, we've got our alveoli and we measure our O2 and CO2 uh, in relation to partial pressures. So we call it a partial pressure of O2. Another word we could use is concentration. So as we breathe in oxygen-rich air, we now have a partial pressure of O2 within our alveoli. And we also have a partial pressure of CO2 because we do breathe in some CO2. Okay, so how does that O2 move from the alveoli to the capillaries and the CO2 from the capillaries to the alveoli? And the principle that you need to remember all the way through this is uh, we will always try and move gases from an area of high concentration to low concentration. So with that in mind, the high concentration of O2 within the alveoli will move across to the capillaries and the high concentration of CO2, which is a byproduct of our muscles working, will move across to this area of low concentration or partial pressure in the alveoli. So let's take a look at that at the site of external respiration. So, uh, as we mentioned, we have this high partial pressure of O2 within the alveoli and a low partial pressure of CO2 in the alveoli as well. But that's only low and high comparatively to the partial pressures within the capillaries. So, as we mentioned, imagine this has come from the working muscles here. So, there isn't much oxygen here because it's been used up by the working muscles. So, the O2 diffuses across into these red blood cells. So it's moving from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. And principally the same thing happens here. As the CO2 comes along here, CO2-rich blood 
as it comes to this point here, it diffuses across into the alveoli because there is a low partial pressure of CO2 there as well. So, what we'll do, how we state that is these pressure gradients cause diffusion of O2 from the alveoli to the capillaries and also diffusion of carbon dioxide from the capillaries into the alveoli. Okay. So let's uh, look at the site of internal respiration and see how that works. It's principally exactly the same. So we imagine we've had our alveoli diffuse the, blur, uh, diffuse the O2 into the capillaries and now those capillaries are turned into arteries and arterioli and now that's moved all the way down into the working muscles. So from there all the way down it comes along here and now we get to this site. We've got the working muscles and it's crying out for oxygen because we're working. So we have a high partial pressure of O2 in our blood at the moment. We have a low partial pressure of CO2 because it was exactly the same as it was before. Compared to, and that's the important part, is compared to the working tissues. So within the working tissue, all the O2 has been used up because of exercise or whatever it is. But one of the byproducts of us working is obviously CO2. So therefore, there is a high concentration of CO2 here, which then diffuses across into the capillaries. So how we would say that is these pressure gradients, in other words, the difference between the high and low concentrations, either in the capillaries or working muscles, these pressure gradients cause diffusion of O2 from the blood to the uh, muscle tissue and diffusion of carbon dioxide from the muscle tissue to the blood. Okay, so let's just add some values to that to try and put it into uh, 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 more context for you. So as we breathe in, let's say that we have 100 milli, uh, millimeters of uh, O2 within that proportion of gas and we have 40 of CO2. So that's now inside our alveoli that we've got pictured here. But within the capillary and the red blood cells, we have a partial pressure of O2 is only 40 and for CO2 is 46. So if you compare the O2 values there, the 100 and the 40, obviously there's a difference between them. The O2 then will move because this is a high concentration to an area of low concentration and exactly the same happens for the CO2. By just putting some values on it to give it a little bit of context. Principally the same thing happens as we said. So this would be would be the same values. So O2 we have 100 and down here we have O2 of only 40 therefore diffusion will take place a movement from high to low all right so we've got the partial pressure which is o2 the alveoli air which is we've said 100 we've got the direction of the diffusion is into the alveoli capillaries and we have the value there so the diffusion gradient is just the difference between them so we would say that the diffusion gradient is 60 um, and as you can see here in a chart, if you said that that was CO2 and that was O2 in the alveoli air, which is there, and then the alveoli capillaries, which are here, as there is a larger amount of O2 in, that, uh, in the alveoli air, it diffuses across. And you can see there's a slight increase in the alveoli capillary blood of CO2, therefore that diffuses across the other way. All right, and exactly the same for the working tissues. Partial pressure is in the capillaries. Muscle tissue is only 40, therefore we have a diffusion gradient of 60. And exactly the same, we've just got the chart there to give you an idea. So within the capillaries, we have a high concentration of um, O2 and it would diffuse across from high to low. All right, so what you could do then is now uh, pause the screencast and then have a look through each one of these values and see if you can work out what's actually happening. So we look at the first one, uh, the alveoli uh, of the lungs there. We have a partial pressure of O2, which is 104, and it's measured in mercury, which measures pressure. And we have 40 for our CO2. So that's what we've breathed in. So that um, oxygen-rich blood then moves down blood leaving the lungs and entering the tissue capillaries comes down to here and then we get to this point here 
and you can see that the partial pressure of O2 is less than 40 therefore as we mentioned we would have a diffusion of O2 from the capillaries into the working tissues now I'm going to leave the rest because uh, I'm sure you'll be able to work that all out okay um, good luck with that uh, next we'll be looking at the uh, Borg shift and the oxyhemoglobin disassociation curve okay many thanks Speak to you soon. Cheers.